There's loads of videos out right now claiming that you can earn insane amounts of money by using AI to make digital products that you can sell online. And the ideas behind these videos are great, but for me, they left one thing unanswered. How do you actually do it? How can you use AI to make these products? Well, in this video, we're gonna answer exactly that question. I decided to experiment with Midjourney myself to work out how to create these digital products using AI that have been discussed in these videos and document the whole process so you can follow along step by step. By the end of this video, you'll be comfortable working with AI to create your base files, which you can then convert into templates using simple online tools. First, we're gonna discuss what Midjourney actually is, then look at how you can get set up on it. And then we'll move on to the good stuff. Actually, how do you create the digital assets that you're going to sell? We'll also cover some core concepts that you'll need to understand, like upscaling and variations. Finally, I'll be sharing a couple of tips and tricks from things that I found in my experience of using Midjourney that really weren't that obvious, and I think you'll absolutely need if you actually want to make sellable products, including a workaround for a bug that I found, and also how to create matching sets of images quickly. So firstly, what is Midjourney? Well, Midjourney is one of the most popular new AI tools for generating art, designs, and other digital assets. There are a few good alternatives to this, like OpenAI's Dali, but Midjourney is by far the most recommended tool for creating digital products that you can sell online. So that's what we're going to focus on here. All of these tools work in a pretty similar way. You enter a prompt, which is basically a text description of what you'd like it to create, and it returns you a bunch of options. In Midjourney, it gives you four options for every prompt. And from there, you can either send a new prompt to create a new batch of options, or you can create variants or higher resolution versions of those images. And through this process, you can iterate through until you get exactly what you want. In Midjourney, the prompt and response system is built into Discord, which you've probably probably heard of before, but it's one of the most popular chat tools where you can set up your own community and participants can then chat via text or audio. It also lets you build integrations into your specific Discord server via commands, which is what Midjourney have done to allow you to work with their system to create the images. So now we know what we're working with, let's go ahead and get set up. There's a lot to cover in this video, so I'm going to have to go relatively quickly, but if you get stuck on anything at all, please just leave a comment and I'll try and help you out. The first thing you're going to need to do is go to the Midjourney website and hit join the beta. Just a note here that you might see this invalid invite screen, but if you just hit refresh a couple of times, it'll go away. Next, you'll need to enter a unique username and accept the terms and conditions. You'll see here that if the name you've picked isn't unique, it'll give you an error message and you'll just have to pick a different one. Once you've done that and passed the image capture, you just need to finish signing up by entering an email and setting a password. You'll then get an email like this and you'll need to tap the verify email button to finish setting up your account. Once you've done that, head back to Discord and type any prompt in order to be asked to accept the terms and conditions. Once you've accepted those, your account is fully set up and the last thing you need to do is pick a subscription option. Annoyingly, at the time of recording, Midjourney doesn't actually have a free option anymore. It was halted about a week before I recorded this video, but the fact that they've only called it a halt does suggest that it's probably going to be re-enabled at some point in the future, but right now, unfortunately, your only options are paid for plans. They are pretty cheap though, and the smallest one is only $10 a month if you pay for it monthly. That's what I got, and it seemed to do everything I needed. Once you've entered your billing details and paid for the subscription, you're now fully set up on Midjourney, and you're ready to start creating images. When you enter back into Discord, you'll now be put into one of the newcomer rooms. You can see lots of different rooms down the left, but most of these work the same from the point of creating images. To create your first image, type imagine forward slash and then type what you want it to create. I've gone with creating wedding invite templates for the purpose of this video as it's one of the most common ideas for AI created digital products that you can sell online. You'll see a preview come up as the system starts processing your request and you'll see progress percentage in the top right in the brackets of the message. When it hits 100% you'll see your final options. The first response you get is always a grid of four and from that point you have the option to either interact with that grid or create another prompt as you'll see we're doing here. The buttons below the image allow you to either create a higher resolution version of the image aka upscale it, or create variants of one of the images instead. The images are numbered from top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. U stands for upscale, and V stands for variant. So U1 will increase the size of the top left image, whereas V3 will create variants for the bottom left. You can also hit the refresh button to just rerun the prompt exactly as it is and get a new set of options. My biggest tip for using any AI image generation tool is that you've got to be extremely specific. So in this example where we're creating wedding invite templates, you'll see my first prompt was far too vague and didn't look at all like the templates you can see online. Once I got a bit more specific and explained the look and layout of the image in more detail, the results quickly got better. At this point, you have a number of different options. If you like this image, then the most important one is upscaling it. This is basically just creating a higher resolution version of one of the images in the grid. You can also press this button here to view the image on the Midjourney website, which is a bit easier in my opinion, and from there you have the option to download the asset or view all your other images in your profile. Okay, so let's quickly talk a bit more about upscalers. Here, you'll see that the default model for Midjourney right now is version 4, and this means that all of your images will be 512 pixels square initially when they're in the grid. This can then be upscaled to double that, and you can also pick detailed or light upscaling, and that basically controls the detail in the image as well as its size. There is also a beta upscaler which allows the image to go up to four times the original size. You can read all about the pros and cons of the different upscalers on the Midjourney website. In my experience, when I used any upscaler other than the initial upscale that you get from the U1 to U4 buttons, a lot of the original style of the image was lost, so to be honest at this stage, I'd recommend just using the default one for these kinds of assets. But this may change 
change when version 5 of Midjourney becomes the default. I'd also suggest having to play around with it and see what looks good for the kind of assets you're creating specifically. Now the other set of buttons that you get are to create variants of an image and you can do that by clicking the V button that corresponds to the image you want to work with. So in this example we've used V4 and Midjourney has created slight alterations based upon the image we selected. This is really useful for tweaking an image a little bit or creating a larger set when you like the general look and feel. So to use this tool to make digital products I would first suggest to create lots of grids and options, experimenting with different prompt combinations until you find something that works for the look you're trying to achieve. You can then go back at any time and access these images in your profile, which we'll go through a bit more in a second, to create higher resolution versions of the images. You can also use your profile to compare different versions and also think about building out sets. My first mid-journey tip is how to solve something that really confused me when I was using the tool. And this is how to access the commands of a generated image after you've lost it in the chat. This actually happens really quickly because the chats are so busy, so this is a really important feature. Now I think the way this is meant to work is that you should be able to click this button here which says open in discord it should then launch discord in the right place but you can see what it actually does is open the chat briefly in the right place before jumping back to the announcement channel to be honest i'm pretty sure this is a bug and it drove me absolutely crazy when i was trying to get back to the grids that i'd created but i did eventually find a simple workaround from an image screen in your profile instead of clicking on the three dots and going to open in discord instead click on the three dots and go to copy and then click copy job id this will save a key to your clipboard and if you go back to discord and type forward slash show and then paste the ID in, it will jump right to the message that you need. I'm sure Midjourney will find and fix this pretty quickly, but in the meantime, this is a good workaround and stops the tool from being basically unusable for what we need it for in the meantime. My next tip is how to create the cleanest version of an image to make it much easier to convert this into an editable document. You'll see here that my first few images actually had loads of surrounding details or ornaments that overlaid the main design, or they were just at really unhelpful angles. I did find that I could solve this by typing the phrase top down into my prompt, and I also tried a few different expressions which you can see here to remove the surroundings and to be honest all of them worked quite well. As I said before in this video the more specific you are the better mid journey is at producing an image you want. Finally when we're creating most of these assets you'll usually need to go and create more than one image or asset to create a pack. Like you can see on these wedding packs here they have at least a wedding invite and an RSVP template. So how do you go about creating images that match each other to then convert into matching template files? Well I found the best way to do this is to create more versions of an image based upon a previously generated image and a new prompt. This is similar to using the variant buttons on an image but you have a lot more control because you're supplying Midjourney with both an image and a prompt. It's also really simple to do once you know what you're doing. So firstly, go to your profile and download the image to your computer. You'll then need to click on the little plus icon in the chat box here and upload your image. From there, type forward slash imagine and drag the image into the chat box to get the URL of that image. Finally, add in the prompt information that you want. So here we're going to create an RSVP template based upon this image. And if the text isn't actually in the prompt box from when you dragged the image in, as you can see it is here, just go ahead and copy that text and paste it in the prompt box and it will work fine. By doing this, you can see that we can create really similar assets that clearly are based around the same style and theme. This is a great way of making matching sets of documents or assets to sell as a pack. So these are my main tips for starting with Midjourney. Hopefully now you've got an account set up and you're comfortable creating grids, upscaling images, and can create sets and navigate your way around Midjourney. This should give you enough of a base that you can comfortably start experimenting and building out the templates and designs that you need to sell. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing because I'll be following this video up with a review of how practical and viable some of the most popular digital product ideas are at the moment by testing them myself. Equally, if you've got any questions or get stuck at any point when trying to follow this along, please just drop me a message in the comments below and I'll try and help you out. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.